There's always those ones. Oh, you can feel the heat. Fun, fun. Everything looks pretty good if you consider the age. But today we're in Blanchard, Oklahoma, and we're going to a heat preventive maintenance at a house out here in the country. Kind of a great thing to be in Blanchard. You get uh, kind of the best of both worlds. So you can be out in the city on one day and the next day out in the middle of nowhere, wondering if you made a mistake. The house we're going to was built in 2002. The last time we were at this house was over two years ago. And looks like the system was the same system that was there. Being that it hasn't had regular maintenance, that's always a indication that we're probably gonna find some definite problems, but who knows? All right, let's go see what we got. Tools we wanna have for this is definitely, you know, obviously drill, basic hand tools, I'm actually going to take a camera. Other things I'm going to be taking is uh, what we call a manometer. That way I can read gas pressures, different things like that. So I try to grab everything up front. Sometimes you run into things where you go, well, I could have used this and not a normal thing I usually take out. So that's where we're at. We got to have a ladder to get up in the attic. You know, a lot of these houses have all kinds of different ways. A lot of them have attic ladders around here, but there's always those ones. They got to make you work out. Oh, you can feel the heat. Well, fun, fun. It's hot. Hey, but guess what? There's light. That's always a good thing. So first thing we want to do is always uh, get good pictures of everything, especially if we've not been there before. The more pictures we can have, the better idea anybody else that looks, anybody in management's always going to like to know what a system looks like especially if they have any questions from a customer. And then we want to make sure we get model and serial numbers of everything. So far, everything looks pretty good for uh, if you consider the age. Um, really, looks pretty good. I mean, no signs of any major rust on the outside here. We want to run this camera right into these burners. You'll notice that rust right there. Probably notice that rust right there. That's common on these. That's nothing to necessarily be worried about. They do start to rust out. You know, you're starting to get a little bit darker there. Most likely from gas not being set right. It can burn off differently and build carbon up. They're not too bad. And so one thing I'm noticing is, so right here, I don't know if you can see that, there's a gap. And so that's sucking in attic air. That's not a good thing. We want that to be somewhat sealed because you don't want to pull in attic air. Another thing you always look is this tape. For, a, for the age, it's staying on here pretty good, but a lot of times that will come peeling up. But we're going to pull this high limit out right here so we can go look inside the heat exchanger. And then we're going to also take a, a peek at the uh, evaporator. That's the same seam as inside, and you'll see that it's got just slight surface rust on it. Nothing that you need to worry about. Go over here and actually look at the coil. See how clean it is. Somewhat clean. I mean, nothing great, but nothing to probably worry about. Now we're going to open the blower compartment. We'll check some things in there. Make sure wiring looks good. Everything else looks good. Then we can fire it off, test the system. One thing we always want to look for is on this board, we got signs of it heating up. So I mean, that's a potential of something that could possibly fail. It's not as common. It's not something I would definitely stress at, but I will say there's some other issues like for the inducer, the little connection here doesn't connect very well. All the other connections seem pretty solid. Oh, that's good. Transformer. How much dust is on the blower? Seen quite a bit of buildup on that blower. Definitely I'm gonna suggest cleaning the blower. Anytime you have a blower that's dirty like that, they always cause problems for your blower motor. Uh, that blower wheel, any kind of extra weight is gonna weigh down that blower. We wanna make sure that they're nice and clean. And this one could, could stand to. You're also gonna think a motor's gonna work harder and so it's not gonna last as long when it's got debris like that. Really the motor on here looks like at one point it was changed out because that motor looks pretty new. Now that capacitor probably is new too. 
most of the time if somebody's going to replace a motor they're going to replace the capacitor so on this capacitor we're looking at we want to have 10 microfarads so we'll put this on here and see what we got 9.8 and uh manufacturer specs says uh between plus or minus six so that's within range because uh 10 would be 10 percent would be one five percent would be five we're definitely over less than five percent whenever you get a weak capacitor is what we call it the motor is not going to function like it should it's going to work even harder so we already have issues with a blower wheel being dirty you know you can imagine if you had potential one less leg of power you'll have even it working even harder than what it is now i discharged this capacitor you definitely want to discharge this capacitor one of the things i remember out in the field i had a unit completely off no power pulled those wires off it didn't shock me at that time but at one point i was messing with the blower back here and i rubbed my hand over that and i got shocked pretty good so they will hold charge and it does hurt so don't do that and if you were ever wondering what temperature it is in these attics and this isn't even a hot day i mean we're talking about 86 degrees that's not a bad temperature at all but we're looking at an attic temperature of about 110 that's pretty warm in my book so what i'm doing now is i'm getting everything set up to be ready to fire it off so far we found blower wheels definitely dirty that would be a big recommendation i would suggest besides that board has some spots where it's definitely having problems if not now sometime in the future really if you're going to spend that kind of money on a 2002 unit i would look at just getting into something new this system i don't know what the efficiency is on the air conditioning but being whatever it is it's probably 2002 it's probably no more than 12 sear so something that we could definitely look into replacing and they could save money in the long run kind of pay for itself after time so looking at this another thing i've seen let me just show you this is a big problem right here this uh flex pipe going through the actual unit you can't do that you're not allowed to have any kind of a flexible line inside the furnace compartment this needs to be changed to be what was code of course we're kind of in the wild west out here you don't run into too many houses out here that have been inspected if they are inspected they have to be inspected by state in a technical sense they're supposed to it doesn't happen but overall still pretty good install just little things like that that kind of matter because it's a potential of a, a fire hazard and that's something we'll recommend to her we want to make sure that safety is the most important thing and anytime we leave a unit we want to leave it as safe as we can and if we are the last ones to touch it we don't want to leave it into something that could potentially harm the customer so let's get down and turn the thermostat on we'll get it fired off in heat and try not to overheat the house turn it to heat and then just turn it way way up all right right now i'm taking an amp draw of this actual inducer there's a spark. Oh, fun. Now, we are running propane on this, so uh, my numbers are going to be a little bit higher than what you see on natural gas. Propane runs a little bit different pressure just because of how it does. One thing I want to definitely make sure is you heard the fan kick on. I want to always make sure I'm watching my burners and uh, looking at them because any kind of dancing in that flame can actually give you an indication that there could be something wrong with that heat exchanger good thing to always look at it later after it heats up sometimes those joints can expand not as much on these usually you see that more on what we call clamshell uh, heat exchangers these are just tube heat exchangers i do like them a little bit better usually we want somewhere around 10 and we're running pretty low that could be a little bit of the reasons if you see inside there we got a little bit of a yellowish flame could be another reason why inside there you're getting certain deposits so we need to adjust that a little so overall definitely some issues to be addressed that's to be expected age is going to make a difference on every single system only thing i didn't do was clean the high limit it looked brand new and uh if you look actually up here it's been replaced just to be nice we'll throw this away but that's a good indication of why it's so clean and you can kind of see on this one it's got that white residue. Sometimes they get black. 
sometimes they get kind of a greenish color. That's all in, an indication that these are not doing what they're supposed to. They're very simple devices. They're literally just a metal rod with a bit of porcelain here to keep it from grounding out. Simplest device ever is flames go over that and the ions from the flames can allow a little bit of electricity through to where you get a DC signal and that's how that board knows, hey, I have flame. That's all this is, flame sensor. But it's a very crucial part. If I was gonna pick the one thing that's probably gonna break on your unit during the winter time, this would be it. So having it cleaned once a year will keep it a lot longer. But ultimately, once you start getting to that point where it gets pretty dirty like this, probably gonna be replacing it. Who needs a gym? <sighs> Woo hoo! Toasty. As you can see, we had problems that need to be addressed. Major problems that need to be addressed, um, just safety issue wise. We're gonna go out here and we're gonna make some different proposals and give them to the client and see what they kinda wanna do. Obviously anything we wanna do, we wanna definitely mark on things that we are just recommendations, things that we say your unit has to have. All that is your choice. We like to give a customer option. Ultimately with this unit, the age of it and the things that need to be done, it would be better off looking for replacement of the unit. When you spend so much money on parts, there's other things that are gonna go wrong. We're looking at upwards of uh, $1,500 probably for all the repairs that needs to be done on this. Looking at putting that into a furnace and then you got a unit outside that potentially has problems, it would be smarter to put that money towards a new unit to where you're saving money in the long run. Overall, this system will run. Can't guarantee that some of those things that would cause problems like uh, that board. It could go out in the middle of the winter and that wouldn't be good because then you know, you'd rather fix it now when you're not using the heat than fix it, have the potential of fixing it and maybe I can't get that board that day and you have to go a night without heat, which we don't want to do for any of our customers, but it does happen. So I'd rather fix it now and so we'll give them the options and see what they want to do. But this is exactly why we do preventive maintenance. It's not all so we can lose weight. <laughs> Could you imagine how big I'd be if I wasn't in an attic all the time? So, being a 2002 unit and the amount of things that I found, I am not surprised. Especially when the, you go into the factor that this unit has not been maintained. You know, we saw that we have a blower that's been replaced. Potentially the capacitor was replaced. All those other things, those are things you're gonna find fell out of the life of that unit. And to be honest, something like that board, being that it's getting hot like that, those usually fail a lot, lot sooner than that. So that's not uncommon. So let's go get the information we need off of the outdoor unit. Woo, you can hear it. Let's get some pictures. Somebody's obviously cleaned out this unit because these are very prone to getting all kinds of debris built up in them. Another thing you'll see around here, we get a lot of cottonwoods. And so there's no real buildup of that. So somebody's been at least taking care of washing this out. These rude units were uh, pretty great units back in the day. Obviously you can see by their rating, they weren't very high efficient and definitely not high efficient compared to nowadays. They're great units. They're easy for service guys to work on. That's one of the reasons a lot of service guys like them. They don't make them like this anymore, but overall age of system, and just kind of, you can hear the, the fan doesn't sound great. Compressor sounds pretty good, but definitely for the age, it's not worth putting any money into. I'm gonna be highly recommending a full system change out, but we'll give them the options for whatever's in their budget. Anything that I'm gonna suggest for a full system change out is, my first look is, is it in warranty? If it's in warranty, I'm not gonna suggest a, a new system. We can get parts for it. Manufacturer will pay for the parts. They'll just have to pay for the labor, so it saves the customer quite a bit of money. Anytime we get up there in age, and kind of the rule of thumb I've always used is, you know, once you've reached about 12 years on that system, you've reached about 70% of the life expectancy on that system. So anything that is gonna be like this, 22 years old, is way past life expectancy. That's just kind of how it goes, you know, Life expectancy of units here in Oklahoma is about anywhere from 10 to 15 years. We, don't, we just don't get them to last that long. They, we run a long 
summer compared to like a lot of people up north. So you're gonna have a lot more run time than most people. Another reason why I'd wanna replace this too is the refrigerant in this is actually R22. So R22 at this point is considered a refrigerant that is, is prone to cause depletion of the ozone. So they completely banned it. Uh, they can't produce anymore. We can actually buy it still, but it's very costly. So with that, we would actually go with a different type of refrigerant. And that's another reason why you'd want to get rid of this. Because if you ever had a leak, you'd be spending a lot of money on adding refrigerant. Of course, if you had a leak, you'd want to look at replacing too, just because age of system, all that good stuff. Best part of this whole job. Anyways, after I spoke with the customer, she seemed pretty concerned about the things we found. Uh, we're going to definitely get a comfort visor to come look at it. She can get a better assessment of what it would be to replace the actual unit with having a comfort visor out. And then all our quotes are going to be good for 30 days. So that gives her an opportunity to really see which way that works for her pocket. One of the reasons we recommend these estimates is to give the customer an idea of what it's cost to actually replace that unit. You know, maybe it's not in their budget right now to actually replace it, but through this, we can actually educate them and have them be better informed to make the right decisions for them. All right, off to the next one.